How can you tell if your dog is in pain? Well, in this video, I'll go through 21 main signs of pain in dogs that you can look out for to make sure your dog is not suffering unnoticed and unnecessary pain. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex from ourpetshealth.com, helping you and your dog to live a healthier, happier life. And today I want to take you through my checklist for the signs of pain in dogs. If your dog is showing any of the signs of pain I mentioned today, then there is a good chance that they are not as comfortable and as happy as they could be. And so a trip to the vet to find out what is wrong would definitely be in order. I've also got this dog pain symptom checklist to download as part of my free arthritis mini course, which you can join by following the link down in the description below. Also make sure you subscribe if this is something that you're really interested in. So let's get started. So we can break these 21 pain symptoms down into four main groups. And the first group is mobility. And the first symptom here is limping or carrying a leg. Clearly, if your leg hurts, then you limp on it. Or even with our dogs with four legs, they can completely take that leg off the ground and just carry it and go three-legged. So any dog who is limping, any dog who is carrying a leg is definitely in pain. Next up, we have stiffness so a stiff dog is definitely a painful dog all too often unfortunately i hear especially in my older patients that you know the stiffness is not due to pain that they're just getting old and this really couldn't be further from the truth stiffness is definitely a sign of pain in dogs so the third symptom is being slow or not running around as normal your dog might be walking absolutely fine they might not hurt when they walk they might not be stiff but as soon as they start running then things start to hurt and so a normally energetic dog who is running everywhere, who isn't running around, that can definitely be a sign of pain. There might be other things that are causing that, but pain is definitely one of the things that it could be. And then following on from this, actually difficulty getting up. So this is kind of more ties to stiffness uh, and is a big problem in our older dogs with arthritis, but there are other things that can cause it as well. A dog who's really struggling to get up, it seems to take them a long time, especially first thing in the morning, then that can be a sign of pain. And then the last pain mobility symptom to look out for is difficulty jumping or climbing. So that might be climbing up the stairs that they really struggle with. It might be that they can't jump into the back of the car or jump on the sofa like they used to. So difficulty jumping or difficulty climbing is another sign of pain in dogs. Okay, so moving on to activity levels now. And the first one here is just a general reduction in activity. So it might be that your dog was always pottering around the house. They're always wandering here, there, sniffing around the garden, but they just seem to be spending more time, you know, maybe lying down, resting, uh, or they're just not kind of quite as active as they used to be. So a reduction in activity. And kind of tied to this, the next symptom is sleeping more, or certainly seeming to be asleep more. If it hurts to move, then what do you do? You don't move. And if you're not moving, then you might just go to sleep or you might appear to be sleeping. And that's something that dogs do. They'll also know that they're not going to be disturbed if they're asleep. So it's a way of actually kind of reducing their interaction, which I'll come on to later. So a reduced activity and potentially sleeping more are other signs of pain. It may be though that your dog actually wants to settle down, but they find it really difficult. And that's another sign of pain is a difficulty settling. So it might be that they seem to kind of lie down, but they just can't get comfortable. They're fidgeting. It might be that they're getting down, getting getting up, getting down, just because they are finding it really difficult to get comfortable. Uh, so that yeah, difficulty settling is another sign of pain. And then with all this reduced activity, we get a weight gain, certainly in chronic long-term pain conditions, then very often our pets will gain weight just because they're often being fed the same amount and they're eating it quite happily, but they're not burning off those calories through exercise, which they're unable to do. So a weight gain is another reasonable sign of pain especially in our long-term chronic pain conditions like arthritis. And of course, this weight gain will only make things worse, which I've discussed in previous videos. Now, coupled with this weight gain and this reduction in activity, we'll also actually get a reduction in the muscle mass. So we can see this quite noticeably. If only one leg, for example, is affected, the muscle in that leg will really start to shrink and you'll be able to see and feel a big difference when you compare left and right legs. It might be, and very often it's the case though, that both legs are infected, often both back legs. 
and you'll get a general reduction in muscle around those legs. So you might start to feel their bones a little bit more prominently, even if they're not lost weight or even if they've actually gained weight. And the reason being that they've actually gained weight elsewhere, but they've lost that muscle mass. Okay, so we can move on to the behavioral signs of pain to look for in your dog. And the first one here, and at number 11 in my pain symptoms of dogs to watch out for, is just hiding away. So a painful dog can be very anxious and they just kind of take themselves away from the family. They reduce their level of interaction because they're not feeling great and also because they're worried that it might hurt. So that's something that they can, can really anticipate. They're worried it might hurt. Similarly, Next up is that they might actually flinch when they are touched. So they might, again, it might not actually hurt that touch, but they're anticipating some pain. And so they're, they're flinching and they're anxious about what will happen. So if your dog is flinching when you're going to stroke them, when you're touching them in a certain spot, then the chances are that there is a pain cause behind that. This can then follow on to your dog becoming just generally grumpy or grouchy just they're not feeling great. And if you've ever been in pain for any length of time, then you know it really does start to get you down and our dogs are no different. And this can then move on to more extreme levels where your dog might actually become aggressive. Just they're so painful, they're so worried that something's going to hurt that quite out of character, they might either growl when you approach them. They may even snap or try and bite if you touch them in a certain spot. And that's not because they've become nasty all of a sudden, it's just because things are really sore. So if your dog certainly seems to have any changes in behavior like that, then getting them checked out is absolutely essential. Another behavioral sign is actually a reduced appetite. So again, a painful dog, very often though a dog who's sick for any reason will have a reduction in appetite. Now missing one meal here or there is certainly not the end of the world and is you know to be expected and maybe normal for any dog but if their appetite is just generally reduced if it's persisting if it's maintained then that can be a sign of pain or like I say of a, a sign of another illness so it should be should be investigated. The 16th sign of pain in dogs is to be chewing or licking on a particular area. So we know that licking and things like that can release endorphins, which makes our dogs feel better, but also they can hone in on an area that is painful, much like we might rub it, but instead they chew or they lick on one particular area. So very often that's around their joints as well. So if they're licking their joints and if they've never had any problems with general itchiness, which can obviously cause them to, to lick and to chew, then that might be a sign that that particular area or that particular joint is painful. A matted coat comes next. Now, this might be more of an issue in cats, but certainly dogs can have this problem as well. If your dog was always very good at grooming themselves, keeping their coat in really good condition, and they suddenly become matted, then that can be a sign they're in pain. Simply, it's difficult to stretch and to reach that area of their coat to groom, and so they stop doing it and the coat becomes matted. And my last behavioral sign of pain in dogs is a change in their toileting habits. So having accidents in the house and this can be because it's difficult to get up, so they're choosing not to get up and toilet in their bed. Other things can cause that, incontinence, cystitis, but the pain is certainly one, one reason for that. Um, it might also be difficult for them to get up the stairs, to get to the door, whatever, to get out of the dog flap if you've got one of those. So if there is a change in toileting habits, then that might be a sign of pain in your dog. Okay, my last three signs of pain in dogs are body changes. So the first of these is your dog being hunched and changing their body position. So their back might be arched and they just look hunched and they, they look painful. They might also have what we call a sore horse with a, a position with the legs um, stretched out and quite rigid. And another postural sign of pain is what we call the prayer position. So it's when their, their back end, their bum is in the air, uh, their head is right down on the ground and their front legs are stretching forward. Now in a puppy or in a younger dog, that can be a sign of play. It can be a sign that they're about to pounce. But in, mo in a lot of cases, then that's actually their way of stretching out their tummy if they're in pain because of a problem within their abdomen, such as pancreatitis would be um, a good example that causes that, or any kind of general intestinal upset. So a stretched out praying position, a hunched position, or a sore horse position can all be signs of pain. Next, we have changes in their eyes. So especially with acute pain, so a sudden onset of pain, the pupils will really dilate. So they get a slug of adrenaline, the pupils will really dilate. And so rather than seeing the kind of the color of their iris, you'll see that their eyes just become big black saucers. And that can be a real sign of pain. It can also be a sign of fear, but pain is definitely a big one if you can't recognize anything that they would be scared of 
in the area at the time that that's happening. And then my 21st and last sign of pain is their breathing and their heart rate. So breathing especially, you might notice, they might kind of be breathing really quickly, they might be panting all the time, and even when they're in a cool environment, even when they're rested, if your dog is panting, then that is really a good sign that they're not feeling great and they're feeling painful is often the cause. Heart rate is the same, so it might become really fast. That can be a bit harder to can be a bit harder to detect. You might be able to put your hand on your dog's chest and be able to feel their heart rate though. In some cases that's pretty difficult. But yeah, a breathing, fast breathing rate and a fast heart rate are my last signs of pain in dogs. Okay, so those are the 21 main signs of pain in dogs for you to look out for. If your dog is showing any of them, then getting them checked over by your vet is definitely a good idea. If you'd like to download the pain symptom checklist and join the free arthritis mini course, then I've got the link down below and I'd love to have you along. There is so much that we can do for our pets in pain and it's something that I feel passionate about. No dog, no cat deserves to be living in pain and there's no need for it. So if you're interested in things that we can do for our pet, then check out the videos that are linked down below and sign up for that arthritis course where I walk you through all of those signs of pain and the things we can do. And it also is a lot of that information is relevant for a lot of dogs, no matter what that, so that cause of pain is. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, then please leave me a comment down below. And until next time, I'm Dr. Alex from Our Pets Health, because they're family.